Hello friends, welcome to Going to Ground. Happy Easter again on Easter Tuesday. And we're just heading into one of my favorite little churches, doing a few church tours uh, in the last week on Going to Ground as uh, the buildings open up again. And it's twilight, it's about eight o'clock now in the village, tiny village of Titcombe, which is uh, right on the edge of Salisbury Diocese, not far from Marlborough, not far from Hungerford. And goodness me, I hadn't seen this, but the graveyard, the churchyard is a carpet of primroses. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Let's go a bit closer. We seem to be at peak primrose week. There's a, um, before we go inside, there's a lovely monument here in the churchyard, which I've noticed before. One of these sort of caged tombs and with this embellished word underneath underneath are deposited the mortal remains of Edward Tanner, many years an inhabitant of this parish. Beautiful man, underneath. It's a time for rising up, isn't it? It's a time for buried things to come above the earth, flowers, and uh, with the promise of all things actually rising up, even those that are buried. Now it's dark inside, as you can see. I thought it would be slightly lighter than this, but it's um, so I might just need to find fiddle around with the lights. There we go, that's it. Welcome to Tidcombe Church. I've actually done a going to ground from here before. Um, it was the first time the churches were back open again. Uh, when would that have been? May, June? Something like that in the first season. This is a, a gloriously unspoiled and unmodernised church. I'm all, all for modernising churches when, when it's right to do so, but there's also something particularly beautiful about a simple English church that needs no embellishment. And, um, oh, I remember when I did film from here, it was on Christmas Eve, uh, also with Grace, I sang a carol by, uh, by the font here long-term viewers might remember. This is a remarkable font. Um, beautiful in, in its simplicity, but it's Anglo-Saxon. So it's about, it's about 1,200 years old, this font. Can you believe? Look at this. <clears throat> Inside this remarkable basin, this amazing bowl, Thousands of villagers will have been welcomed into the world. Generation upon generation. That is a, a, a mind-blowing thing, really. That that one bit of stone has seen so much celebration of new life. And uh, I don't think there are any lights up in the chancel here, or I've, I've not found the switch, but you can see get a pretty good idea of it. Quite lovely. I know it's often said, but there is something deeply, it's not comforting so much as in inspiring or consoling as being in a, 
an ancient house of prayer where the prayers have sort of percolated, permeated into the stonework. And it is, it feels to be quite literally a house of God. Do you know what I mean? That the, it's, it's prayed in space and space does soak up what happens in it. We don't know quite how, but we're creatures that live and are made from the constituents of space-time. And so what, what happens in place does leave an imprint. And we know that that's true in distressing and disturbing ways, but it's also true in, in the, 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 the beautiful and comforting ways where, the, where there is a sense of peace in a place like this, which is utterly beyond words. And um, the line from the Easter hymn, Here might I stay and sing. You know that line, Here might I stay and sing. No story so divine. My song is Love Unknown. And in a building like this, I get the, the feeling that I could just sit for hours. <laughs> And time would take on a different kind of quality. Sorry, I'm walking around rather a lot, but I'm wanting to just give you an impression of the place. And I have sat alone in this church for quite some time and done some sketching and, and writing. And it's the sort of space that just carries you. You don't... It's quite hard to describe, but you don't... Uh, doesn't feel like the normal passage of time. You can quite happily stay here. I hope your Easter's going well. And I hope some of the consolation of this season and the promise it brings for every situation, every space and time, whatever has happened in your place, the news of Easter Day is of uh, of a transformation possible in, in every in every location, every situation, no matter how bleak it looks. And that's what we insist upon. That's what we choose to live out from Easter Day onwards. I'm glad to have shown you this this evening, but wherever you are, God bless you as you go to ground.